What's up, remote job seekers? It's your boy Shane here. And today we're gonna to be diving into the wild world of work from home jobs. But not just any jobs, we're talking about the cream of the crop, the most thrilling, heart pounding, adrenaline pumping jobs that you can do in your pajamas. Just kidding, we're actually gonna be looking at some of the most boring but realistic remote jobs out there. And these might not be glamorous, but hey, they pay the bills and you don't have to leave your house. So grab your coffee, put on your comfiest sweatpants and let's dive in. The first one is going to be a remote meter reader analyst. Yes. Yes, this is a real job. And I know what you're thinking, meter reading? That sounds about as exciting as watching paint dry. But hear me out. This job is perfect for all you number crunchers out there. You'll be analyzing data from utility meters, looking for patterns, and helping companies save on energy. And it's kind of like being a detective, but instead of solving crimes, you're solving inefficiencies. And the best part, you can do all of this from your couch, and companies are always looking for people with keen eyes for detail. Plus, you get to feel good about helping reduce energy waste. So, it's a win-win. Now, the earning potential here is pretty good. The average salary for a meter reader analyst is around forty-five dollars to $60,000 per year. And that's not too shabby for staring at numbers all day. So, a quick guide to land the job is one, you want to brush up on your data analysis skills. Two, you want to get familiar with the utility industry software. Three, you want to highlight any experience with pattern recognition or problem solving. And then four, be prepared to explain why you're passionate about meter reading. Good luck with that. And some really good websites you can go to to find job listings would be indeed.com, LinkedIn, and of course, a utility company website such as PG&E, Con Edison, etc. Now, overall, the opportunity score here is going to be a seven out of 10. There's steady demand, decent pay, and you can do it from home so it's not too shabby. Speaking of reading things remotely, let's move on to our next job. It's perfect for those who love to book it. Get it? Book it? Because we're talking about hotel reservationists. Yes, there is a career out there called a remote hotel reservation specialist, and this is going to be really good for vacation enthusiasts. And as a remote hotel reservation specialist, try saying that one 10 times, you'll be the voice on the other end of the line when someone calls to book their dream getaway. Or, you know, their budget motel stay for a business trip to Nebraska. Hey, no judgment here. But yeah, you'll be answering calls, making reservations, and dealing with all sorts of customer queries. And if you think you can handle questions like, does the pool have a deep end? And can I bring my emotional support alligator? Then this job might be perfect for you. Now, according to Payscale, the average salary for hotel reservation specialists is about 30 to $40,000 per year. So this is not a very high paying job, but it is relatively easy to get into. And there can be better jobs down the line that you can get into in the travel industry. Plus, some hotels offer travel discounts to employees. Now, a quick guide to landing the job would be to work on your customer service skills, practice your phone voice, because nobody likes a mumbler, learn about different hotel booking systems, and be prepared to work odd hours, because hotels never sleep. Now, some really good websites for job listings would be hcareers.com, Hospitality Online, and major hotel chain websites such as Marriott, Hilton, etc. Now, this one is relatively easy to get into and it's kind of unknown. So I am going to give it an eight out of 10 opportunity score because there's always demand. You can work from home and who knows, maybe you'll book a room for a celebrity. From booking rooms to keeping the internet clean, let's go ahead and move on to our next thrilling opportunity. And that's going to be a content moderator. All right, internet warriors, this one's for you. As a content moderator, you'll be the unsung hero of the web, keeping social media platforms and forums safe for the rest of us. Your job, sifting through posts, comments, and images to make sure they comply with the community guidelines and probably censoring people that your company doesn't agree with, let's be honest. So you can think of yourself as the bouncer of the internet, but instead of kicking out drunk people, you're removing spam, hate speech, and pictures of people's lunches. But it's not all bad though, sometimes you might come across a really cute cat video. Now when it comes to the earning potential, according to Indeed, the average salary for content moderators is around thirty-five dollars to $50,000 a year. Not bad for scrolling through the internet all day, right? Now a quick guide for landing the job is to familiarize yourself with various social media platforms, of course, then you want to make sure to to develop thick skin because you're going to see some really weird stuff. And then you want to be prepared to explain how you'd handle difficult situations. And then you want to learn about content policies and community guidelines. Some really good websites to apply for this type of job would be indeed.com, LinkedIn, and major social media company career pages such as Facebook, Twitter, etc. Now, overall, I do think this one has pretty good opportunity. It definitely helps if you're actually already involved in the community that you want to become a part of. So for instance, if you are a big fan and you're involved in a particular video game, community, that would be a really good place to be a moderator. But most people out there may not be involved in these types of communities. So for that reason, I'm going to give this one a 6.5 out of 10 opportunity score because there's always demand, but it can be mentally taxing. So proceed with caution. Speaking of managing online content, let's move on to a job that's all about creating it. And that's going to be a social media manager. All right, selfie queens and meme lords, this one is going to be for you. As a social media manager, you'll be the mastermind behind a company's online presence. And your job? Crafting witty 
tweets, curating Instagram-worthy photos, and trying to make LinkedIn interesting. Good luck with that last one. And you'll be juggling multiple platforms, engaging with followers, and trying to make even the most boring products seem cool. So you think you can make a plumbing company go viral? this might be the job for you. Now, according to Glassdoor, the average salary for social media managers is around fifty dollars to $70,000 a year. So not too shabby for professional tweeting, huh? Now, a quick guide to landing this job is to one, build your own social media presence, two, learn about different social media platforms and their algorithms, three, develop your writing and visual design skills, four, be prepared to explain how you'd handle a PR crisis, like when the CEO accidentally tweets something embarrassing. And some websites for job listings would be Indeed.com, LinkedIn, and creative job boards like Behance, or dribble. So this one is actually a pretty good opportunity. I'm going to go ahead and give it a nine out of 10 because there's high demand, it's creative work, and you can do it from anywhere with internet. And by the way, if you want to learn more about how to get into digital marketing jobs like this one, go ahead and click the free training, which I'll put down in the description and the pinned comment below. So from managing social media to shaping young minds, let's move on to our next exciting opportunity. And that's going to be an online tutor. So for this one, we're calling all brainiacs and knowledge enthusiasts. And as an online tutor, you'll be sharing your wisdom with students from the comfort of your own home. And your job? Explaining complex topics, answering questions, and trying not to facepalm when a student asks if the American Revolution happened before or after World War II. That's right, you'll be helping students ace their tests, understand difficult concepts, and maybe even develop a love for learning. Plus, you'll get to feel smart every day. Who doesn't want that? Now for the earning potential here, according to ZipRecruiter, the average salary for an online tutor is around forty dollars to $60,000 per year. But if you specialize in high demand subjects such as SAT prep or advanced math, you could earn even more. And this is something I did back in college where I actually started to earn over $100 per hour doing this and I help people to study for this test called the PCAT. Now a quick guide to landing the job is to one, choose your subject area of expertise, two, get comfortable with video conferencing tools, three, develop patience because you're gonna need it, and then and four, be prepared to explain complex topics in simple terms. Now, some websites that are really good for job listings would be tutor.com, Chegg, as well as VIP Kit. And that one is specifically for teaching English to international students. So yeah, this one has high demand, flexible hours, and you get to make a difference in student lives. I'm gonna give it a nine out of 10 opportunity score. Also, this one can be done as a side hustle, a part-time job, or a full-time gig as well. So it's extremely flexible. And by the way, if you really love teaching people online, you could also consider becoming a tutor, but just doing it on YouTube. So instead of tutoring people one-on-one -on -one and teaching them, you can teach thousands of people instead. And if you want to learn exactly how I was able to do that, I actually have a free YouTube crash course, which will teach you basically everything you need to know to get started. And you can check that out by clicking down in the description and the pinned comment below. Next on the list is going to be the unsung heroes of the business world, the customer service representatives. Now I know what you're thinking, dealing with angry customers all day, no thanks, but hold on. It's not all doom and gloom. In fact, it can be pretty rewarding. You're basically a problem solving superhero minus the cape and tights. And you're gonna be helping people sort out their issues. And sometimes you might even get a thank you. Imagine that. Plus you'll get to perfect your fake laugh for when customers tell terrible jokes. It's a skill, trust me. And the best part, you can do all of this from your living room, even in your pajamas if you want. Just don't forget to put on a shirt for video calls. Now the earning potential here is relatively low compared to a lot of the other ones on the list. It's usually gonna be anywhere from 25 to $50,000 per year, especially when you first start out. So a quick guide to landing the job is one, you wanna brush up on your communication skills. Two, you wanna practice your patience. Three, you wanna get familiar with common customer service software. And four, you wanna to prepare for scenario-based interview questions. Some really good websites for job listings are going to be indeed.com, flexjobs.com, and ziprecruiter.com. And overall, this one is really easy to get into. I'm going to give it an opportunity score of 8 out of 10 because there's high demand, flexible hours, but it can also be emotionally draining. So as long as you realize that this is pretty boring and kind of mind-numbing repetitive work, and you're probably also going to be dealing with a lot of Karens, this one should be okay. Speaking of patience, our next job might test yours in a whole new way. Hope you've got your listening ears on because you're going to become a transcriptionist. So welcome to the world of transcription where every word counts, literally. And as a transcriptionist, you'll be turning audio into text faster than you can say, can you rewind that please? And it's perfect for those of you who've always dreamed of being a human subtitle machine. And you'll get to listen to all sorts of interesting and sometimes not so interesting conversations, interviews, and lectures. And who knows, you might even learn something new like how to pronounce otorhinolaryngeologist without tripping over your tongue. Just remember, what happens 
happens in transcription stays in transcription. No gossiping about those juicy corporate meetings you're typing up. Now, typically you're gonna earn anywhere from 15 to $30 per hour, depending on your speed and specialization. And that comes out to making about this much per year. Now, a quick guide to landing the job would be to improve your typing speed to at least 65 words per minute, practice your listening skills, familiarize yourself with transcription software, and take a transcription test to prove that you have the skills. And some websites for job listings and just to get started in general would be rev.com, transcribeme.com, and gotranscript.com. And overall, this one is not the most glamorous one. It is very mind numbing. It's very boring as we talked about before, but I'm gonna give it a seven out of 10 because there's steady work available, but it can be repetitive and it requires focus. Now, if you thought transcribing was deal oriented, wait until you see what's next because I hope you've got your thinking cap on. And that's gonna be an online survey taker. If you've ever wanted to get paid for your opinion, well, now's your chance. As an online survey taker, you'll be the voice of the people or at least the voice of the people who like to click buttons. And you'll be answering questions on everything from your favorite brand of toothpaste to your political views. And it's kind of like being on a game show, except the prizes are smaller and you don't have to wear a ridiculous costume. Unless you want to, I mean, I don't judge. Just be prepared for some strange questions. If you were a vegetable, which one would you be and why? Ah, the joys of market research. So the earning potential here is usually about one to $5 per survey with potential to earn 100 to $500 per month if you're really dedicated. And a quick guide to making money with this is to sign up for multiple survey sites, create a separate email for survey invitations, be honest in your responses, and be patient. It takes time to qualify for higher paying surveys. Also, another pro tip is to check the subreddit called r slash beer money because they tend to keep up with which survey site are the best. But some really well-known ones, of course, are going to be Swagbucks, Survey Junkie, and Vindale Research. Now for this one, it's obviously not a traditional work from home job. This is more of one where if you have a little bit of extra time, you can make money from home doing this. And it's probably not going to pay for your rent, but it could end up being beer money or just a couple extra lunches out. So I'm going to give this one an opportunity score of five out of 10 because it's easy to start but it's low pay and inconsistent work. All right, so from giving your two cents to counting other people's pennies, let's move on to our next exciting opportunity, which is becoming a virtual bookkeeper. That's right, numbers, numbers everywhere, but not a digit to spare. Welcome to the world of virtual bookkeeping, where balance sheets are your best friend and Excel is your playground. As a virtual bookkeeper, you'll be keeping businesses' finances in check, all from the comfort of your own home office. And it's perfect for those of you who find a joy in reconciling accounts and get a thrill from perfectly balanced books. Just imagine, you could be the superhero that saves a small business from the chaos of mismanaged finances. Cape optional, calculator mandatory. Now you're typically going to start off making around thirty to $60,000 per year. And a quick guide to landing the job is to one, get certified in bookkeeping or accounting. Two, familiarize yourself with popular accounting software, such as QuickBooks. Three, develop a keen eye for detail. And four, build a portfolio of your work, with dummy data, of course. Now some websites for job listings would be accountingdepartment.com, Robert Half, and Indeed.com. And overall, this one has a ton of opportunity, not just for bookkeeping, but for other lower level accounting positions. I'm going to give this one a nine out of 10 opportunity score because there's high demand, good pay, but it requires specific skills and attention to detail. So from balancing books to decoding medical jargon, our next job might have you reaching for the aspirin. And that's going to be a medical coder. All right, medical coders, time to scrub in. Don't worry, no actual scrubbing required. As a medical coder, you'll be translating doctor's notes into a secret language of numbers and letters. And it's kind of like being a spy but instead of natural secrets, you're going to be dealing with billing codes for ingrown toenails. That's right, you'll become fluent in medical jargon faster than you can say supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. Just remember, ICD-10 code W61.62XA means struck by duck. Yes, that's a real code. And no, I don't know why it's necessary. But you're going to have to know it. And the earning potential here is actually $35,000 to $60,000 per year with potential for higher earnings with certifications. So a quick guide to landing the job would be one, get certified as a medical coder, either CPC or CCS. And of course, this kind of depends on the area you live in, etc. And also a lot of the time the company will actually train you on this stuff Two, study medical terminology and anatomy, then you want to familiarize yourself with coding systems such as ICD 10, CPT and HCPCS. And then four, just practice, practice, practice. Now some really good websites for job listings would be AAPC.com, imedx.com and aviacode.com. And yeah, I think this one's a great opportunity. I'm going to give it a nine out of 10 opportunity score 
score because there's high demand, good pay, and there's opportunity for advancement. Plus, medical careers tend to be incredibly stable when it comes to recessions. So from decoding medical mysteries to hunting down grammatical gremlins, our next job is for all of our grammar enthusiasts out there. And that's going to be a proofreader. So attention all grammar Nazis, your time has come. As a proofreader, you will be the last line of defense against the horrors of misplaced apostrophes and dangling participles. You'll be reading everything from blog posts to novels armed with nothing but your keen eye and a red pen or track changes if you're feeling modern. And it's kind of like being a detective, but instead of solving crimes, you're solving linguistic mysteries. Just remember, with great power comes great responsibility. Use your powers for good, not to correct your friend's text messages. Now, the earning potential here, especially when you first get started, is going to be around twenty-five to $50,000 per year with potential for higher earnings if you become a freelancer. And it also helps a lot if you specialize in a particular type of writing and particular niches. Now, a quick guide to landing the job is one, you want to brush up on your grammar and punctuation skills. Two, you want to familiarize yourself with style guides such as AP, Chicago, etc. Three, you want to take online proofreading tests to prove your skills. And four, you want to build a portfolio of your work. Now, some good websites to get started would be proofreadingservices.com, scribindi.com, and editfast.com. And overall, I'm gonna give this one a 6.5 out of 10 opportunity score because there's steady demand, but it can be competitive and it does require strong language skills. All right, so from hunting down typos to hunting down talent, let's see what our next job has in store. That's right, we're talking about a virtual recruiter. So welcome to the world of virtual recruiting where you're basically a professional matchmaker for the corporate world. As a virtual recruiter, you'll be playing Cupid between job seekers and companies, all from the comfort of your home office. And you'll be sifting through resumes faster than a team teenager swipes through TikTok videos. And it's kind of like being a detective, talent scout, and salesperson all rolled into one. Plus, you'll get to crush people's dreams or make them come true, depending on how you look at it. But just remember, we'll keep your resume on file is the corporate equivalent of, it's not you, it's me. Now the earning potential here, especially when you first get started, is likely gonna be between 40 and $80,000 per year with potential for higher earnings with commissions. Now, as most of the jobs on this list, when you niche down, when you specialize, you can make much more money. Now, a quick guide to landing the job would be to one, develop strong communication and negotiation skills, two, familiarize yourself with applicant tracking systems, three, build a network in your industry of choice, and specifically for the type of job that you're likely going to be hiring people for. And a pro tip here would be to try to hire people for jobs that you're very familiar with. And then four, practice conducting video interviews. So this is gonna be amazing for you if you're a good judge of character. Now, some good websites for job listings are going to be, of course, LinkedIn Jobs, Indeed.com, and ZipRecruiter.com. And overall, I do like this one a lot. I'm gonna give it an opportunity score of eight out of 10 because there's high demand, good pay, but it can be stressful and target driven. So from finding the perfect candidate to teaching the perfect lesson, let's see what our next job has in store. Ah, yes, you can become an online ESL teacher. Now, what does that stand for? ESL stands for English as a Second Language. And this one is going to be great for our language lovers out there because it's time to put on your teaching hats. As an online ESL teacher, you'll be helping students from around the world master the quirks of the English language, which by the way, is incredibly complicated if you don't grow up speaking it. And you'll be explaining why read and read are spelled the same, but pronounced differently. And why buffalo, 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 buffalo is a grammatically correct sentence. And it's kind of like being a linguistic superhero armed with nothing but a webcam and a whiteboard. Just remember, patience is key, especially when your student insists that beach and bitch sound exactly the same. Now, the earning potential here, especially when you first start out, is likely going to be between $14 and $25 per hour with potential for higher rates with experience and qualifications. And a quick guide to landing the job would be to first, get a TEFL certification, second, brush up on your grammar skills, third, prepare for some fun, engaging lesson plans, and four, practice speaking clearly and slowly. And some websites for really good job listings are going to be VIPKid.com, EnglishFirst.com, and iTutorGroup.com. Com. Now, I'm going to give this one an opportunity score of 7.5 out of 10 because there's steady demand, flexible hours, but it can be early mornings or late nights due to time differences. So this one becomes even better if you're willing to move to other places in the world. So from teaching English to judging search results, our next job might have you seeing the internet in a whole new light, and that's a search engine evaluator. So if you've ever wondered who decide what pops up when you Google something, well, wonder no more. As a search engine evaluator, you'll be the unsung hero behind those search results, and you'll be rating the relevance 
and usefulness of web pages faster than you can say, I'm feeling lucky. And it's kind of like being a critic, but instead of movies or restaurants, you're critiquing websites and search results. Just be prepared for some weird searches, like why does my cat stare at me while I sleep? Because yeah, that's actually just the tip of the iceberg. Now the earning potential here is a bit low. It's usually around 12 to $15 per hour, but there is potential for higher rates with more experience. But this one is relatively easy to get started with. And a quick guide to landing the job would be to one, familiarize yourself with search engine guidelines, two, brush up on your research skills, three, stay up to date with current events and pop culture, and four, be prepared to take a qualification exam. Now, some websites for job listings would be appin.com, lionbridge.com, and isoftstone.com. And overall, this one is not the best one on the list by far, but it is relatively easy to start making money. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a six out of 10 opportunity score because there's steady work available, but it can be repetitive and it does require constant focus. All right, so evaluating searches to planning virtual soirees, our final job might have you reaching for a digital party hat, and that's gonna be a virtual event planner. So last but not least, we've got the party planners of the digital world, which are virtual event planners. And as a virtual event planner, you'll be orchestrating online gatherings smoother than a jazz ensemble. And you'll be juggling time zones, managing tech hiccups, and making sure everyone's mic is unmuted when it should be and muted when it shouldn't. And this is kind of like being a ringmaster in a digital circus, complete with occasional clowns who can't figure out how to turn on their camera. Just remember, you're on mute is the new Check, check, is this thing on? So the earning potential here, especially when you start out, is probably gonna be around 40 to $70,000 per year with, of course, potential for higher earnings for larger scale events. And a quick guide to landing the job is to one, familiarize yourself with various virtual event platforms, two, develop strong project management skills, and three, brush up on your problem solving abilities. Oh, and it's probably a good idea to build a portfolio of successful virtual events as well. And you could even start off just doing this locally and not getting paid for it, but that's a good way to build your portfolio. And some websites for job lists things would be eventbrite.com slash careers, LinkedIn jobs, and indeed.com. And overall, this one's pretty good. There's growing demand, good pay, but it can be stressful and requires excellent multitasking skills. I'm going to go ahead and give it an eight out of 10 opportunity score. Now, if you're looking for remote jobs that are almost always hiring, so you can get hired as quickly as possible, I did make a video about that. It's the seven remote jobs that are almost always hiring. You can check that out by clicking right here.